In today's notes, we're going to focus on the isosceles triangle and the equilateral triangle. On day two, we talked about how to classify uh, triangles in the first bullet at the top of the page. It says an isosceles triangle has at least blank congruent sides. At least meaning two or more, an isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. And our triangle to the right, these are the two sides that look to be congruent. So I'm going to mark those congruent. The second bullet, the congruent sides have a special name, and the congruent sides are called legs. The next bullet, the blank angle is the angle formed by the blank. The vertex angle is the angle that's formed by these two legs. So if you follow along with a highlighter or watch, this leg here and this leg here comes together to form this angle and this angle right here is the vertex angle. The side opposite the vertex angle, so if we look opposite the angle, that would be this side right here. And this is called the base. Along the base, we have two angles, this angle right here and this angle right here. Those are called the base angles. And I just want to put an arrow here in star. Remember, or recall, that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides. These two base angles are opposite your two legs. So opposite one leg is this one, opposite the other leg is that one. So your two base angles are congruent. So this angle is congruent to that angle. And since I use two, I'll use three. Okay? Example number one, we have defined the measure of angle C. It's all numeric. Okay, with it being an isosceles triangle, since these two sides are congruent, you can remember that the base angles are congruent, so angle C is congruent to angle B. Or if you forget that, if two sides are congruent, then the angles opposite are also congruent. So angle C is congruent to angle B. So I'm going to start by subtracting 38 from 180. You can set up an equation, but you don't need to, okay? That leaves us with 142 degrees left inside the triangle. And since these two angles have the same measure, I'm going to divide this by 2 to get the measure of 1, which would be 71 degrees. So the measure of angle C is 71 degrees. We want to put that back in our triangle because not only is C 71 degrees, but B is 71 degrees. So it might be good to note that both of the angles are 71 degrees. And number two, we have to find the measure of angle S. This time it's algebraic with angle R being X plus 30 and angle S being 2X. Because it's an isosceles triangle, we have the two sides congruent, so this would be the vertex angle opposite these two congruent sides would be the base angles which are also congruent. So angle R is congruent to angle S and congruent angles have equal measures. The measure of angle R is X plus 30. The measure of angle S is 2X. So in order to find the measure of angle S, this angle right here, I need to know what X is to substitute. So to solve the equation, I start by subtracting x. You get 30 equals x. So plugging it in, 2 times 30 is 60. So the measure of angle S is 60 degrees. Last one for isosceles triangles. It says the measure of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle, well, I there's some translating involved here, and rather than writing left statements, I'm going to draw a triangle, okay? It says I have an isosceles triangle. 
So if you want, you can mark the two congruent sides. The vertex angle is 20 more than three times the measure of a base angle. So 20 more than, more than means to add. So 20 plus three times the measure of a base angle. Well, I don't know what the base angle is. There's no statement that says the base angle of the isosceles triangle is. So our base angle is x. The base angle is opposite the two congruent sides. Remember, they are the same measure. So they're both x. Now to translate, the vertex angle is 20 more than 3 times the base angle, which is x. That gives us the three angles of the triangle, which we know all three. So if you want to put three lines, you have to fill all three lines, is 180 degrees from day one. So x plus x plus 20 plus 3x is equal to 180. I'm going to subtract the 20 first. I realize I can combine like terms, but as I subtract the 20, watch what happens. Now I'm left with all like terms to combine. So now I have 5x as 3x plus x plus x is 5x equals 160. Divide by 5 and x is equal to 32. Find the measure of each angle, so that's the measure of each. So this one's going to be 32, as well as this one, so those were easy. And then this one here is going to be 20 plus 3 times 32. Order of operations says we multiply before we add. 3 times 32 is 96, and 96 plus 20 is 116. So my answer, three angles are 32 degrees. It's important to include the unit of measurement, 32 degrees and 116 degrees. So it makes sense. And isosceles triangles, have, uh, they have two sides congruent and therefore two angles congruent. The next page we're going to focus specifically on the equilateral triangle, okay? In order for a triangle to be equilateral, it has to have three congruent sides and three congruent angles, or more or less all sides congruent, all angles congruent. Well, if they're all congruent, the three congruent angles, take 180, which all three add up to, divide it by the three, and you're going to get 60 degrees. So each angle is 60. So this is 60, this is 60, and this is 60 when it's equilateral, okay? Recall if it's equilateral, then it's equiangular. Again, just means that all uh, angles are equal in measure or congruent angles. Equilateral, lateral meaning side, means congruent sides. So number four. Number four tells us that all three sides are congruent, so therefore I know all three angles must be 60. So given this one angle here, algebraically is 3x plus, uh, 3x plus 15, we can set it equal to the 60 and then solve for x. So subtract 15 and we get 45 equals 3x, divide by 3, and 15 equals x. And we can stop there because it just wants us to find x. Over here, what this symbol, what the arc means at every angle is that they're all congruent. And if they're all congruent, then all sides must be congruent, okay? So these two measures that are given to us algebraically, well, if these two sides are congruent, they're measures are equal. So we know that JL is congruent to KL. So we set their measure, the measure of JL is 2x plus 1, equal to the measure of KL, 4x minus 8. I'm going to add the 8 over first. So I have 2x plus 9 equals 4x. Subtract the 2x. I get 9 equals 2x divided by 2 and 4.5 is equal to x. Last one. Use the information in the figure to state whatever conclusions you can about the unmarked sides 
and the angles in the figure below. Well, if they're telling me that each angle is A, they're all the same letter, then you can set up an equation. A plus A plus A is 3A equals 180 divided by 3, and A is 60. But you could have determined they're all 60 to start because they're all the same number. If they're all the same number and they have to add up to 180, each angle is 60 degrees. So if each angle is 60 degrees, then all sides are the same number and all sides would be 13. So each side is 13, there's no unit of measurement, and each angle is 60 degrees.